Hello and welcome to Kema Freak. In this video, we are making a bridal robe. Yeah, yeah, we are making a tool robe. It is popularly worn for photo shoots. You regularly see a bride wearing it, or for pregnancy photo shoots and all of that. That's what we are making. And we'll be making use of our miniature dress form as our model. Hi, model. This will not only save me some fabric, since this is just for tutorial purpose, it will also allow you to see it in frame. So if I make my size, for instance, I have to be very far for you to see everything, right? But with this, it will allow everything to be easy to put into frame. I hope you understand what I mean. So we are drafting the pattern and moving on to the sewing process. I'll be showing you some part of the sewing process on paper as well because it's just more visible to tell you you need to sew here than on tool because the tool is very light. It's sort of transparent. So enjoy the tutorial. Please subscribe if you haven't. Make sure you give this video a thumbs up before you go. Hey, hey, it's very important. Now let's move on to the tutorial. One major measurement you have to put into consideration when making this robe is the length. It has to be extra long so that it has this luxurious feel when it flows on the floor. Like I mentioned, we are making this for a miniature dress form. I have two papers here, one for the back pattern and one for the front pattern. And I'm starting by marking the neckline. Um, if this was a full scale dress form, that would be the regular neckline 3 by 3 inches. And then you slant the shoulder by 1 inch. Because this robe will be a kimono, so I just extended the slant. And then I'll take the measurement from the center of the neck to where I want this rope to end. Then I'll mark that measurement on paper. So now I am just marking the length of my rope. For this miniature dress for my mid use of 38 inches. But just go ahead and use the measurement you want to use. Now to create the ample curve, I marked the bust point with some ease. Then I marked the bust circumference with some ease. It all depends on how easy you want this to feel for the sleeve i decided to make it look slanted along the sleeve hem and now i'll connect my slant line and then connect the hem of the sleeve to the chest line or where will have been the position of the chest line of course with some ease around there so from this point i'm just going to draw an a shape straight to the hem of my pattern or the hem of this pattern <laughs> so there are no hard and fast rules. It depends on the volume of fabric you want. You can make your A shape wider or smaller. So around the armhole here, I don't want it to look this sharp because it's a kimono and it's just going to look funny if it's sharp. So I created a curve and that means I don't need that sharp point again. And also at the hem, I made the hem slightly curvy. I raised the hem by two inches to achieve this and this will be the pattern for the back, so I need to modify the neckline a little bit and make it smaller than the usual front body's neckline. So after this was done, I went ahead to cut out the pattern. At this point, I decided to slant this sleeve hem again. But even while I was sewing, I went back to this original um, sleeve hem. After cutting out my pattern, I can now separate the front from the back so we can do some more work on the front pattern. So for the front neckline, you don't want the regular neckline. So I just took my curve right there and created a slight V-shaped curve. It's not a sharp one, just something that will still look smooth. And then at the hem here, I also want it rounded. So I'm just blending the hem onto the center front and then i'll cut out that part so that we have like a smooth continuous kimono look <laughs> so i'm going to be transferring these patterns to the tool i have right here for your choice of tool it's advisable to go with the soft tool because it just feels better on the skin than the very rough ones but when it comes to the clouding part of this, you may want to use the medium textured tool. The back will be cut on fold because you don't need the hem at the center back. 
while the front will be cut as two separate pieces. While transferring this to the two fabric, I made sure I added my seam allowances, one inch at the sides and half an inch every other place. For this piece, I decided to start the cloud effect from the waistline. So I'm just marking that here and I will notch the two just to indicate the part. You can decide to have your two clouds all around the robe. I will start the sewing process by sewing the back and front piece together along the shoulder sleeve by half an inch. So once that is done, this is what you will have. So after this step, I went ahead to trim that allowance because I wanted it to be neat. But you have an option while sewing your tool. You can decide to make use of a French seam so that you sew twice and then you have the same allowances hidden inside by just sew this directly. Next, I'll be sewing the front and back piece together along the side seam by the one inch side seam allowance. And this is what we have so far. Pretty basic, <laughs> nothing elaborate. So um, remember the notch we created at the waistline. So that's where we are going to start creating the cloudy effect from and it will just extend all the way to the back and back to the waist again. I'll be using a bias tape to give the neckline a proper finishing. Now let's create some cloudy effects on this robe. I am cutting out strips of fabric. I made mine 5 inches wide and you can have it as long as possible guys I used about 13 yards to create this cloud effect but once you have a strip you can decide to double it up which I did probably why I needed that much for this miniature dress form <laughs> so then we'll create plates and sew it on the piece as I explained earlier on, you can decide on where you want the cloudy effect to start from or you can choose to have it round the neckline through the back to the other neckline. But mine, I'll be starting from the waistline downward towards the hem of the front to the hem of the back, back again to the waistline. To achieve your pleat, you can make use of your sewing machine gathers foot, but I made use of needle and thread and i just doubled up my thread and then seal it into the tool then drag this so i didn't want to pleat directly just so i can decide on the fullness i want before going ahead to sew on the tool here is what your cloudy effect should look like you can make it as full or as sparse as you want it to be so i went ahead now to sew it on the robe for this miniature dress form I used 13 yards to achieve this cloudy effect while the main piece just took it took less than two yards actually so for a full woman you can expect to use at least 30 yards for this piece so between 30 to 50 yards depending on the fullness you're going for now this is what our robe looks like at the end of the day it looks so beautiful so you can imagine this on a full scale and wow that's the beauty of miniature you can use less fabric and then just achieve the look you want to learn <laughs> if you enjoyed watching this please give it a thumbs up thank you for watching see you in the next video Bye bye